Last month, Berkeley, California was the site of a free speech rally that devolved very quickly into a violent clash between supporters of the president and their, quote, anti-fascist opponents. One of the most violent figures at the rally was a masked man who went around smashing several Trump supporters in the head with a metal bicycle lock. Now, with some assistance from the amateur sleuths on the website 4chan, police have identified former Diablo Valley College professor Eric Clanton as the attacker. He's been charged with multiple, multiple felonies. Dan Siegel is representing him. He's a longtime lawyer, and he joins us tonight. Dan, thanks a lot for coming on. Sure, happy to be here, Tucker. So, um, in, in your statement before the judge, um, you said that, in effect, there was a lot going on, a lot of shoving, a lot of racist, homophobic uh, language in the air, suggesting, I think, that this guy was provoked. I want to put up for our viewers who haven't seen this video of one of the assaults that took place. You'll notice, there he is right there. That apparently is your client. And he smashed a guy in the head. Oh, there he is who had his hands up and was not shoving anybody. So when you said that there was shoving, I mean, that did not apply to the guy you're apparently representing. Why would you try to excuse an assault like that? First of all, I'm not excusing anything. Uh, you're jumping to conclusions, Tucker. Um, we have a presumption of innocence in this country, and I assume that you as a patriotic American believe in it. There's an accusation that my client did certain things that are against the law. None of that has been proven. It hasn't even been proven that he was present at that event, much less that he hit anyone, much less that he did so without justification. So the evidence will have to come in but you're kind from of dodging someplace my questions. other than a website. Uh, okay. It's not a web. I mean, that, I don't think you're contesting uh, the, the reality of that video or its veracity. You're saying the guy in it is not your client. But when you spoke to the judge, you said, look, People were saying unpleasant things. What does that have to do with the assault that took place? Why is that relevant to anything? I think there was a lot of anger at the demonstration on April 15. These all right people were using Nazi and KKK salutes, waving a flag that has Nazi and KKK symbols on it. People didn't like that. Uh, they was yelling back and forth. Uh, what happened beyond that, I think, needs to be proven in court. I no, don't but, think there is proof that my client attacked anyone. Okay, but you're, you're totally missing my point, which is your job as lawyer, presumably, is to argue my guy wasn't even there, as you said. He didn't do that. But somebody did do that, and we're watch, we just watched a video of it, whether it's your client or not. Why does it matter what people were saying? No slogan, no flag is an excuse to hit someone in the face with a bicycle lock. And you seem to be suggesting otherwise. Uh, you know, I'm really not. I don't believe that it's appropriate to use force or deadly force against someone who is not themselves involved in some sort of uh, wrongful activity. Maybe it's not appropriate at all. But I think that you are, without really looking into it, are assuming that these 4chan people have produced some legitimate evidence of an assault. Well, there is, I mean, this video is evidence of assault, and it's legitimate. Whether or not it was your client is the outstanding question. But I'm much more interested in the growing tolerance on the left for political violence and the excuses that people seem to make, including the one that you just appeared to make, for it. When you say they were waving Nazi flags, who's not opposed to that? I'm totally opposed to that. But that's a very different thing that's protected by the First Amendment. Hitting someone in the head and assaulting him is not. And so I don't know why you'd even bring that up except to excuse it. I'm not bringing it up to excuse it. I'm saying that I'm not assuming that the snippet of video which you played demonstrates what occurred. You know, I've seen, I believe I've seen the same video a dozen times, and it lasts for all of about 10 seconds. You don't know what occurred beforehand that led to whatever we saw on the video. So, yeah, I agree. There's no excuse for using deadly force against peaceful protesters, whether they're conservative or right wing or left wing. I'm totally missing. Like, what could possibly be on that video that we haven't seen that would excuse that behavior? Like, think of something. Just make Violence. something up that would explain that behavior. I don't have to make something up. You know, there's a law of self defense in this country which allows you to use reasonable force to protect people or to protect yourself. Now, we've been at these rallies 
where these alt-rightists have stabbed people. We had the incident in, uh, in Portland, Oregon, just the other day. So for you to suggest that Wait, these right-wingers oh, are Wait, peaceful so, so, supporters of the First Amendment is ridiculous. But, I, but that's totally been debunked. The guy who's been charged with the two murders in Portland was not an alt-right guy. He was not a Trump supporter. He was a Bernie Sanders supporter, a Jill Stein supporter. Oh, so, like, come on. You know, you he yells up, at this woman wearing a headscarf, and then he gets up in it's court on his today Facebook and says, I'm not Maybe a terrorist. Maybe you should do a little research a before you go popping off on television. It's, it's his statement, not mine. It's not a close call. He says, I did not vote for Trump. I support Bernie Sanders and Jill Stein. Now, the guy looks like a wacko to me. But to lay it at the feet of Trump supporters is just wrong by his own description. I guess we should believe everything the guy says. I agree with you on one thing. He's clearly a wacko of sorts. You know, there was a protest up in Sacramento two months ago where nine people were stabbed by these right wingers. So I hope we're not pretending that this is a peaceful protest in support of the Constitution. There, we're looking at a video. I mean, this is like grotesque. This is like upside down world. We're looking at a video of a guy who you apparently, you say you're not, others say you are, are representing in a, against felony charges who's a leftist, who is hitting a guy who's not doing anything in the video, and it's long enough to assess that, and you're saying the real problem is uh, something else that happened somewhere else? I mean, we're looking at video of a leftist you're hitting a guy. At, you're looking at 10 seconds of video. Um, there's not proof that this was Professor Clanton in that video. And again, you're not looking at what happened before that okay. assault or apparent assault. Okay, so the guy who was standing with someone else in between him was somehow attacking the guy in the black mask with a bike lock in his hand. Pardon me if I don't find that plausible. Really quickly, is your client saying he wasn't there? Is that his position? He's saying that he is innocent of the charges. He's relying on the well-established principle of American law that he is innocent until proven guilty. No one can test that. And that it is the responsibility of the prosecution to introduce evidence was he there or not? and prove that he is guilty. Was he, was he at the rally? Out, that will come out in court. Okay, we'll be watching. Dan, thanks. Okay, thank you.